This week on Addicted to the Outdoors. It's time for our annual browning turkey hunt. Something I was definitely looking forward to. Although things are a tad different this year. There's a little hiccup in the beginning. The coronavirus has kicked in. So the plan was for me and Tom to come in, hang out. I ditched my camera guys. And we'll get a little turkey hunting in to kick off this spring. My heartbeat is just pounding through my vest. Big old Tom pitches down. I'm getting nervous. Man, there are just birds freaking everywhere. Came back in front of us, 40 yards. Trace, don't you miss. We really enjoy sharing, you know, our lifestyle. It's just a spear in your hand and going to town hoping you can get some. Got him, boy! Got him! Let's go! Born and raised by a hunting family in the swamps of Florida and shooting a bow by eight years old, John Brunson took to hunting early. Gina grew up fishing with her father, but it was weekend hunting trips with John that put big game blood under her fingernails for the first time. Even now, with raising six kids and running three companies, John and Gina are still a fistful of dirt couple that take life by the antlers. Sound familiar? If so, pull up a stump with the Brunsons because they are addicted to the outdoors. So this week on Addicted, we are uh, doing our annual turkey hunt with the Browning guys. Every year we get uh, Tom and Brent down here, we get them their Osceolas, and then we always try to mix in a little something to give them a little bit of a Florida flair. Well, it's that time of year, the annual Browning hunt with the boys has arrived. And I can't tell you how excited I am because we're off to Florida for an annual trip with the Brunsons, but there's a little hiccup in the beginning. The coronavirus has kicked in. This year was gonna be a little bit different because of COVID-19. And because of that, I'm definitely staying home and making sure the kids are taken care of. As we got close to the trip, we were not on quarantine yet, but everything was starting to heat up. Brent called me and told me that he just wasn't gonna be able to make the trip. He said he really wanted to, but his wife was kind of freaking out over this virus. Me, on the other hand, I decided I could come down and I'll do it in a car. I'm gonna drive, we're gonna stay safe. John's not gonna have any cameramen, it's just gonna be me and him. And knowing these two, there's gonna be a lot of laughs. Oh, look at the perfect timing. Little Tommy boys right there. Oh, I just dusted him. <laughs> I just crop dusted you. As I was pulling into Harold's place, uh, of course, Tom was getting there right before me. Perfect timing. Yeah, right? I'm just getting started. Oh, we can, we can actually touch each other, because. We're gonna to be together for the next week, so if you, yeah, yeah. one of us one got of the us corona, gonna get it, right? Done, right? It don't matter. Since it's just two of us, plan was to get a good night's sleep and get out there on my first turkey hunt of the year. So that next morning, we were up bright and early. But we've gotta make one stop first. The traditional donut shop stop. Plan was to meet at the donut shop, catch up a little bit, get out to the farm before light, do some uh, quick strategy, and then get after those birds. I mean, we can go up front where Brent always goes, or we can go back around Death Row. Death Row, is that where I shot mine with Bo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's where, I've, that's where B killed his. That's where I killed all of, all of mine except for last year. And we're heading to a place that I'm familiar with because it's just right down from death row where I've had some success in the past. So that first morning we went out, you know, we hunkered down the spot, got set up, uh, everything looked good. We were hearing gobbles on the roost. My heartbeat is just pounding through my vest. All of a sudden we start to see birds work through the timber. We see a strutter over to our right. All of a sudden, three strutters come out. I'm losing my mind at this point. We're sitting there, I'm getting locked in, trying to think, you know, what are we gonna do? Trying to get turned. At that point, somebody lets me know that there's a gobbler in front of me. So I start watching this gobbler. While all of these things are going on, 
All of these other birds run out of the field. The bird that's strutting across the field is not making much noise, so we start to assume that must be the dominant bird. He's not gobbling, he's strutting, but he is definitely displaying some dominance. What do you think? Give him just a minute and let him go under the fence. Yeah. A little bit later, they go back into the timber, and at that point, we start having to strategize. What are we gonna do? Well, we decide at that point that I have to step out and make a conference call, which isn't terribly pleasant, but I have to do a little work every once in a while. Well, as luck would have it, after we'd stepped out, I had done my conference call and I had gotten a good lunch in me. And when we come back, we decide to go to the other side of the timber in hopes that something else might be passing through later that afternoon. Once I got that good lunch in me, the sun started to beat down on me and we've all been there. Here we are. It's turkey season, it's time for the turkey nap. And sure enough, I'm out. I'm in a coma. Tom falling asleep in the woods? Yeah, that's never happened. I barely know my name because I am in a deep, deep REM sleep. And I feel Trace start to tug on my sleeve. Now I've hunted with Trace over the years and he's a little bit of a jokester. So when he tugs on my sleeve, I'm thinking, Oh, what is he doing? Well, I reached over and shook his arm. I was like, there's a turkey in front of you at 20 yards. And I could tell he thought I was messing with him. I'm like, what is he, he stop, man. Get off of me, I, I'm sleeping, man. Well, he does it again, so I crack my eyelids and he is not lying. There is a bird coming in silent, moving from my right to left, and he's about 25 yards. He's lucky Trace was paying attention or he would have snoozed right through that turkey coming out. Now remember, we've got trees all the way until they're right in front of me. Now, to the left of these trees is this beautiful wide open spot, right? So as the bird's coming from right to left, I've got the camera set on this big wide open spot, record, life is good. I'm groggy to say the least, but to make it worse, he's got this long beard and he's walking and it's swinging and it's hypnotizing me and I don't know what to do at this point. So here's where the instincts start to kick in. I mean, he's just clearing the tree that's gonna let him walk straight across this wide open space that we've got everything focused on. As someone that always turkey hunted, you take the first opportunity to get your gun into kill position. So he walks behind a tree, gun in kill position, head makes an appearance. As this bird just slightly steps out past the tree, Tom rips one off. Oh man. Couldn't have happened in a more wrong situation. It was so close he blew bark off the tree. Only tree within 50 yards. Like I'm sitting here thinking, really Tom? Way to go Tom. <laughs> Did you could see? just wait. You could just let him get right there, right? Like, we've got all this wide open space to shoot this big old bird, and you've got to like shoot him behind the tree, you know, where he's not on camera. I think he tried to cut a tree down with a shotgun. <laughs> There's only one tree. Look at all the open space he was gonna walk through. Let me, let, me, let me give you some advice here. Let the bird clear the tree or you're gonna hear about it. Fortunately though, he was dead, so we had a good story. He just didn't flop or anything for the camera. That's, that's classic Tom TV. We're coming up with a YouTube channel. Classic Tom TV. <laughs> it's an episode, I get the whole episode. Well, Tom and Brent are definitely no strangers to pulling the trigger before the cameraman is on the bird. Not only do I realize that that bird is on the other side of that tree, I also realize this is not the first time myself or Brent Feathers has done this. Bird, we're gonna do a whole show on Tom's most embarrassing moments. <laughs> oh my God, we could do that now. There's an episode. <laughs> you know, after all these years of hunting with Tom and Brent, I can tell you this, this wasn't the first time that um, someone shot a bird behind a tree off camera. He's fixing to leave. But we got a bird down. It turned out to be a great hunt and we got the bird. He got a trip on the upside down bicycle. Oh, I'm telling you, when I licked him, he was hypnotizing me. Ooh, son. Look at those curls on there too. Right? <laughs> I can't decide what was funnier. Me being terrible or the look on John's face at me being terrible. I'm like, really? Wow, really? We decide we're gonna call it a day because we've probably used up all our luck as it is. 
And at this point, we don't want to disturb the roost. We know where the turkeys are. We'll come back and give it a whirl tomorrow. Day two, we kind of had this strategy. You know, after Tom got that first bird down, you know, we decided to try and go after the second bird. And we decided that we were gonna formulate a strategy for the next day, and it was gonna involve me sneaking into the middle of the field, sitting in some pines where that bird had been coming out the last two mornings. I'm feeling good. I've already got a bird down on the ground, so I'm not feeling any pressure, but I'm really excited because me getting out in the middle of the field is a unique strategy. They're gonna try to film me from across the way. If the bird changes his strategy and is a little closer to the tree line, I'm thinking John's gonna get a shot with the recurve, and then Trace was gonna be there with his shotgun as plan C in case things went awry and John and I didn't have any luck. So we kinda had all bases covered. The bird starts gobbling, they fly down, he does come out in the corner. Next thing you know, that bird pitches down. Big old Tom. He pitched down the same three hens, kind of did the same routine. But he starts making a line at me. The hens that are in front of him get within 25 yards. But that, that Tom just hangs back for some reason. He stays 70, 80 yards out. Unfortunately, he keeps walking off like he has in the past. But just as he starts doing that, it appears that the dominant hen cuts back in front of the blind. At this point, I start getting excited because I think he is going to pop out from behind a brush pile right in front of John. So as he starts working our way, you know, Trace is on him, and I'm like, okay, if this bird rolls in on over here, I'm going to try and smoke him with a recurve. He starts cutting across and he keeps moving. And at that point, it dawns on me that he's not in recurve range and he keeps working to the left. And he just doesn't get into, you know, he just doesn't get close enough for me to get a comfortable recurve shot. So at this point, he starts working his way back out, but he's still well within shotgun range. So it's now time for plan C. He got out about 40 yards. <laughs> Giant cover. And it works out that Trace is able to pull it off, knocks that bird down. Oh my gosh, I never thought that was gonna happen. Man, I can't believe it. He did a great job. I mean, this is his first time ever cell filming and shooting something while he's filming. You know, unfortunately, throughout, you know, getting all of that handled to try and get his shot, the camera goes a little out of focus. But I'll tell you what, for his first time filming, the fact that he got it on camera itself, you know, is, is actually a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm just super excited. And to share it with Tom and John and Trace, I couldn't ask for anything better. Oh, that might be him, look at that. That's what I was thinking as I was watching that thing hang. Pretty, he's got the big dangler. That might be him. That's old bird. Congratulations, bud. Good job, bud. Thank you. Nice bird. So we're heading back to camp. Um, Ron was telling me something about this unique piece of farm equipment that he invented. This is a, the invention that I came up with a few years ago called the cannon lift, because uh, I had a need to be able to convert my hay spear quickly and easily into a, a boom pole. You can go from using something like a gamble here to you know clean elk or moose or cows or anything, deer or hogs, to loading farm equipment like this tractor tire or that rotivator we just loaded a minute ago or very, uh, very fast and simple. Almost as quick as you shooting a turkey off film. Yeah, right? <laughs> I will say it looks super easy to use and super convenient to carry around, so. You know, it's pretty cool. I can see why someone would come up with something like this, but uh, it was kind of cool going back to camp and seeing this cool little thing that Ron invented. And now it's time to shift gears. We've already decided and made plans that we're gonna go back and quarantine at the Brunson compound. We still had a lot to do. We still had a lot of plans to hang out back at our place. Now John and Tom are headed back to join us for some fun at the Brunson compound.
for more information. Tom got to catch up with Gina and see the kids. And really, we just had a couple of days planned of relaxing, you know, trying to see what was going on with this whole quarantine thing. Because this is a great place to hole up in quarantine. Not only did we get to come back and we got to go out and go fishing, we got to go out and ride the boat. We're practicing social distancing. We're on the boat, we're playing some cornhole in the backyard. It's a private beach. We're not around other people. We just kind of hung out, man. We hung out on the beach. We did some boating. Oh, oh look, at, look at all the manatees. Many? Look at how many of them. Look at all the manatees. Now, some of you may know this, but I do some competitive barbecue cooking. I don't know that I'm the best in the world, but I do a pretty good job. So John and Gina had been on me to come down and cook one year. So I brought my gear this year, brought my knives. We had a brisket over here. All in all, just had a really good time before we kind of closed out our trip. Please. And what we picked to close out our trip this year was a little bit of fish gigging. And I thought because Brent didn't make this trip, it'd be a cool opportunity to take Tuff and Gunner, our two kids, out with Tom. Well, I've definitely never been gigging before, but my dad's told me about it plenty of times. Never even gigged before, no clue what it, I had no idea what gigging was like. So I was pretty stoked to finally get to try it out. So, we're out here shooting sheep's head, gigging sheep's head, flounder. You can gig other stuff, but that's our main goal tonight. All right, you guys ready to start sticking some stuff? Yeah, bro, let's do this. Get him. Tough, you ready, buddy? Yeah, let's go. All right. I see a wild can right here. <laughs> yeah. A wild can. I was looking for sheep's head because I find them to be quite tasty. Oh, we're sheep's head right there, Sam. Yep, yep, yep. I'm <laughs> good. Got him. You get him? But we also had perch. We had a lot of things around us. You see that perch right there, Sam? I, I, I'm, I'm, Sam right it's taking me like a split right. second too long to identify that it's the perch. Got him, boy. Oh, yeah. Sam, perch. Done. Sam perch. That's what it's called. Sam perch. <laughs> I just stuck it. When we finally got out there and I saw how we were gonna do it, oh, I was, so, I was so excited. To... Yeah. yeah. Tom, we're together, bud. Chief said. We got oh, one. Keeper. Good job, buddy. Good job. Well, you know, watching Tom gig fish and Tuff and Gunner and you know, Tuff and Gunner haven't done a lot of gigging. They're usually bow fishing, so this was something really brand new to them. Gigging, um, which I'd never done before, I think the closest thing I could compare it to was uh, bow fishing. However, there was no arrow, there's no bow, there's no line. Uh oh, perch, perch, perch. Ah. Fired up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's just a spear in your hand and going to town and hoping you can catch stuff. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Ah. Oh, 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 close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined. <laughs> All right here, boys, get ready. Oh, 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 oh. You get it? Oh, oh. Tommy. Oh. In the air. <laughs> I saw that big sucker sitting there. I was like, oh, no. As soon as I saw it, I said, kill that yeah, thing. <laughs> I was all over that. <laughs> yeah, the minute I saw him floating over there, my eyes got big. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what I came for. Oh, nice job. Buddy. Little sheep's head. 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 One of the neat things about this trip is if you know me and John, we can tend to be a little intense sometimes. In this instance, however, we decided we were gonna step back, relax, and have a little more fun. You know, these trips are always fun for me and Gina. Getting guys down that we do business with that ultimately become friendships. We really enjoy sharing, you know, our lifestyle. And it's always a blast having Tom down for the week. At this point, he's basically part of the family. One thing I learned on this trip 
is that relaxing can sometimes be the key to a great trip. I'd venture to say that next year, especially after Brent sees this episode, um, he's not going to be missing another Brunson trip.